there were multiple men staying in the home. The home looked kind of like it was falling apart from the outside. Um, there were cars and all sorts of things at the front of the yard. Um, to be completely honest, it, it appeared as a home that was selling drugs out of it. There was a lot of, uh, like according to the neighbors and stuff, there's a lot of traffic. It just didn't appear like a safe environment for a newborn. Deadbeat mom gives birth to drug-addicted baby infected with STDs. Why Miss Ingrani? All right. Let's go ahead and get them both sworn in since they're both here. You each will raise your right hands and unmute for me. All right. Do each of you ladies solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you'll give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes. Okay. All right, Mr. Trouch, you may proceed with your first witness. <clears throat> Thank you, Honor. I'd call Kelsey White first term. Okay. Ms. White, would you state your name for the record, please? Kelsey White. And Ms. White, how are you employed? I'm an investigator for Child Protective Investigations. And how long have you been in that role? About eight years. Okay. And you are familiar with the case involving the child, Xander, is it Rube? Rube, yes. And how are you familiar with that case? I was the investigator on the case. How did the department become involved in this case? Um, we received a report um, regarding concerns of uh, mom using during her pregnancy. Okay. And when you first get a case, is your first step to try to meet with parents? Yes. And were you able to meet with mom in this case? Um, I met with mom at the hospital. Okay. And did you discuss the allegations with her? I did. And... <clears throat> What was mom's, so allegation of drug use, what was mom's response to that? Uh, she did admit to using my Okay. Um, did mom state um, specifically like how long she had used, when she had used, did she give you any details on that? Um, she has an extensive history regarding use and she had used pretty uh, consistently. Uh, did she state whether she had used throughout the pregnancy? Uh, yes, and that that's why we became involved, because she did test positive during her pregnancy at a hospital visit. Okay. At the time, um, did mom state what her intentions were as far as with the child? Was she planning on uh, keeping the child, adoption, or anything like that? Um, at the time, she had discussed... Um, the baby staying, um, like adoption was discussed, yes, but the plan, it was questionable what the plan had been set, if that makes sense, like that she had taken the steps to do that. Okay. Um, but did she state, did she state to you whether she planned on keeping and raising the baby? Uh, no, that she was not going to do that. Um, <clears throat> were there any complications with the baby that uh withdrawals anything else come up with the baby um yeah he was in um the hospital um for a little bit and uh mom had tested positive for chlamydia which obviously that affected the baby and he was having difficulty breathing um staying calm and he was jittery so i mean typical withdrawal symptoms okay uh, did he receive any other type of treatment while he was at the hospital? He had to be on antibiotics because of the infection and everything. Okay. Um, and was that, you had mentioned chlamydia, was that syphilis also? Or Yes, sorry. Okay. okay. Um, did mom give you any names of family members or anybody to, uh, that the child could be placed with or to be looked at to place? She did. She mentioned her mother, um, that she was here in Amarillo and had, I believe, he, uh, had her other child, had been raising her other child. Okay. And was that looked into? Yes. Um, the supervisor at the time had a conversation with her about everything that was going on, and she did have concerns with mom using methods. 
kids and being able to care for a baby. Okay. So at the time, grandmother was not a viable option for that? At that point, no. She had already kind of been through this with the other child. Okay. Did um, did mom give you any other names of anybody to look at? Um, no, not at the time. Um, and from our understanding, the the dad at the time was incarcerated for drugs. So. Okay. And that was going to be the next question. Did mom tell you who um, dad was or did she think dad was? She said she believed it was a Daniel Austin and said that he was in Oklahoma uh, incarcerated for a drug charge. Okay. And were you able to find him? in your investigation? Uh, no. Uh, we looked and ran everything we could. A few showed up here. Um, we went and tried to locate them here in town, and none of them were the correct person. Okay. Um, did did you, the department try to prevent removal by, um, y'all talked about a safety plan, but there weren't any uh, viable options, correct? Correct. We had no one appropriate at the time. Okay. Um, didn't know where dad was or if he was dad at the time. Correct. Okay. Um, what about, um, PCSP didn't have anybody that could, um, supervise for the safety plan. So I'm assuming no appropriate families for that. Correct. Those two kind of coincide. So without an appropriate caregiver or someone who would even be willing to, to monitor her with the baby, I, that wasn't an option. Okay. Um, at that time, was the decision made to file for removal? Yes, sir. And that was also based on mom's admittance of uh, ongoing and current drug use? Correct. And do you believe that was in the best interest of the child? I do. Um, when you, um, after removal, where was the child placed? Um. Honestly, I'm trying to think. The kiddo was placed, I believe, in... Give me just a second. I'm sorry. Um, and I believe in a foster placement. Okay. Um, also, was was the child have issue feeding? Yes, they had issues. Um, he was moved to the NICU during his stay at the hospital um, to receive those antibiotics, and he was having difficulty feeding from a bottle. Okay. Um. Were you able to meet with mom after removal in orders to go with the paperwork with her? Uh, no, at that time, uh, trying to locate. Well, yes, I did meet with her at the home that she said she was staying at. And that was another concern because it was not appropriate. Okay. Um, and due to the concerns in the removal, you believe it was in the best interest of the child to remove from mom at that time? Yes. And you still, even after removal, were not able to find dad? No, we did um, a few more things that we have with our special investigators here, and we were unable to locate him. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Michelson? You're, you're muted. Sorry, I'm just rambling on. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Miss White, you testified earlier that um, Jessica had used drugs extensively. What evidence do you have to support that conclusion? Um, she has history with the department involving um, the removal of her other child due to drug use and that that's a quiet that was a six year seven year age gap at that time and she had been using throughout that as well okay and um you also testified that you investigated the home she was staying in and concluded it was inappropriate what was the what was the basis of your judgment for that um, when I initially tried um, to meet with her, I couldn't get in contact with her uh, through phone. I guess it had been shut off. And when I went to the house that she was staying at, um, uh, there were multiple men staying in the home. The home looked kind of like it was falling apart from the outside. Um, there were cars and all sorts of things at the front of the yard. Um, to be completely honest, it, it appeared as a home that was selling drugs out of it. There was a lot of uh, 
like according to the neighbors and stuff, there's a lot of traffic. It just didn't appear like a safe environment for a newborn. Okay. Um, pass the witness, Your Honor. Oh, uh, Ms. Kincaid? No questions, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Zavala. No questions, Your Honor. Right, Mr. Trout, anything further of this witness? Nothing further from this witness, Your Honor. Oh, one one quick thing I'll say, Your Honor. Um, Ms. White, Mr. Michelson asked um, a question at the beginning about um, any evidence toward the drug use. Um, your main evidence on that, though, was mom admitted to it, correct? Correct. And we have the, po uh, for my case alone, we have the positive uh, UAs for her and baby at the time of birth. And then the previous positive drug screen at the hospital just months, a few months prior to her giving birth. So she had continuously used. Okay. I'll pass witness, Your Honor. Okay, anybody else have any further questions for Ms. White? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right. Is Ms. White free to leave at this time? No objection, Your Honor. No objection? No, no objection. objection. All right, Ms. White, thank you very much. You're free to go on about your day's activities. Thank you, Your Honor. Call an RTN, Your Honor. All right, she's been sworn in. You may proceed. Ms. Angraini, would you state your name for the record, please? Uh, Nurti Angraini. And just for the record, would you spell your first and last name for them, please? It's N-U-R-T-I, first name and last name, A-N-G-G-R-A-I-N-I. -I. Thank you, ma'am. And Ms. Angraini, how are you employed? Uh, I'm employed with St. Francis as a permanency specialist. And you familiar with the case involving the child, Zandaru? Yes, sir. And are you the caseworker on that case? Yes. Yeah. Um, when you first receive a case, what is your first steps? Um, the first step, um, I uh, met with the mom and I tried to call and contact the mom. Um, and tried to um, get to know her and um, and see what's what's uh, the situation, and then um, after that, I'm going to um, make the service plan and to mitigate the risk um, with the mom. Okay. Yeah. And tell me, what are you said? Make the service plans. What do you, what are those, and what do you mean by that? And service plan is I created based on the removal facts um, uh, that can help mom um, uh, do the services to get her a baby back. Yeah. So, so family plans of service um, are services to help parents work toward reuniting. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So reunification. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, was that done in this case? Yes. Okay. And are those service plans, when you make them, do you go over with them with the parents? Yes, sir. And um, sometimes parents sign them, sometimes they don't? Yes. Are those filed with court? Yes, sir. Okay. Was that done in this case? Yes. Okay. And were these service plans made orders of the court? Yes, sir. Do you have the exhibits I sent out, Ms. Ingram? Yes, sir. And um, can you pull them up? Yes, sir. Exhibit number one. Can you tell me what that is? Do you recognize that? Yes, sir. It's a family plan for Jessica Rip. Okay. So that's the family plan that was generated for mom. Yes. And this was filed with the court? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, exhibit number two. Can you look at that and tell me what that is? Yes, sir. Okay. What is that? It's a status hearing order. And, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Um, and was it filed with the court? Yes. Your Honor, I'd ask to admit exhibits number one and two. Uh, they're both certified copy, file marked and certified copies um, of the service plan and of the status hearing order. Any objection? No, no objection. objection. All right. Petitioners exhibits one and two will be admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Ingrani, um, service plans are ordered 
at the status hearing, correct? Yes. And um, in the status hearing order was when the service plans were made in order of the court. Yes. Um, <clears throat> as far as the mom's family plans, did she sign this family plan? Yes, sir. Um, can you tell me, we're going to kind of walk through it, what services did mom work and which ones did she not? Uh, and I'll, I'll call them out for you real quick just so you can we can keep it in line, okay? Yes, sir. Um, do you know, does mom have transportation? Uh, not that I know of, sir, no. Um, and real quick, when was your last contact with mom? Mm, no, chicken. Got it. August 15. August 15th? Yes. And was that a phone call or in person? Google? It's a text message. Okay. Let's, let's, last... clear, let's clarify what year we're talking about. Yes. Just to be clear. Was that August 15th of 2024? August 15, 2024, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um and when was the last time you had a face-to-face -face meeting with mom? Um on March 18. Of 2024. Okay. Um, and when you talked to her in on text message on August, what was that conversation? Mostly every month, uh, I tried to contact mom through calls and text message asking if I can meet with her face to face mm -hmm. uh, to go over the service plan and update about the service plan. Um, were you able to get her to meet with you face to face at that time? Only one time on March uh, 18, 2024, one time. Um, were you able to go over service plan with her in August over text message as far as what she had done? No. Okay. Um, when's the last time you had just a, not text message, but a phone conversation, like a phone call? Um, that's during, um, she never, answer the phone uh, other than March 16 before when I schedule a uh, face-to-face on the 18. Okay. So only one time I talk to her by phone and the rest goes with text message. Okay. All right. Um, do you know where mom lives? Uh, yes, sir. Um, have you been able to go by there and meet with her there? Yes. One time. Just the one time? Yes, uh, sir. Do you go by regularly to see if she's home? Yes. Okay. Have you, other than that one time, have you been able to catch her at home? No, sir. Okay. Um, do you know, is it a house that she rents or is she living with somebody? Um, she told me she rent a home um, <clears throat> and then she works at the, the apartment that she lives in as a um, cleaning service lady. And then... Um, there, when I uh, went into the home, there was um, evidence that there's somebody else living there, like a man's shoes, but she did not tell me who that was. Okay. Yes. Um, so as far as you know, she does have a, a stable living arrangement, but you don't know who else lives there. Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Um, did mom complete, mom done an OSAR? No. Okay. Was she ordered to? Yes. Does did mom um has she complied with random drug screenings? Uh she went only one time. Okay. And was that uh back in March? Yes, March twentieth when she went. And have you attempted to send her every month since then? Yes, sir. Okay. And has she no show to those? No show. Okay. Um, to any of these, are you sending these email, text message? How are you getting the notice to? Uh, text message and email. Okay. Um, to your knowledge, she still has the same number? Um, yes. Okay. And is she required to update you on phone numbers, living addresses, anything like that? Any changes throughout the case? Yes, sir. Okay. And has she updated you that she has a different number? No. Okay. Um, so you've 
attempted to send her from uh, April until October, and she has yet to go drug screen for you? Yes, no, no drug screen. Okay. Um, did mom <laughs> complete rational behavior? No, sir. <clears throat> um, sorry. Did she complete um, participate or compete complete a psychosocial? No, sir. Um, did she do parenting classes? No. Did mom complete any services throughout this case? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No. Did she start any services? No. Okay. Um, when was mom's last visit? Did she have visits with the child? No. When was mom's last visit? I think when she was in the hospital, and after that, no, no okay. visit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> move over to dad real quick. We we had a dad named in the case, um, mm -hmm. and that dad was found not to be correct. Yes. Okay. Um, has mom given you any new name of a possible father in this case? No. Okay. Do you have uh, what's it called? Exhibit number three in front of you. Yes, sir. And can you tell me what exhibit number three is? It's certificate of paternity registry search. Okay. And does it state whether anybody has claimed or made an intent to claim paternity as a child? No. Okay. Um, and was this filed with the court? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I'd ask to admit exhibit number three. It's a certified copy <clears throat> of the paternity registry search that was testified to. Any objection? No, no objection. objection. All right, Petitioner's Exhibit 3 will be admitted. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Ingrani, is the department today asking to terminate the parental rights of the mama, the mother, Jessica Rube, as to the child, Xander Rube, based upon the failure to work services? Yes. And... Um, you said mom has not had any visitations, correct? Yes, correct. Um, do you know whether mom can, through your knowledge of the case, do you believe mom can uh, provide a safe shelter and essentials for the child? No. Um, has the department attempted to provide services to help the mom reunite with the child? Yes, sir. And has the mother availed herself of, of sure. those services? Has she, has she taken advantage of those services? No. Okay. She didn't. Um, and due to um, mom admitting to drug use throughout the case? Um. Yes. Or, excuse me, during the investigation of the case? Yes. Um, and are you asking the court to terminate the parental rights of any unknown father um, based upon any failure to register with paternity registry? Yes, sir. And do you believe that's in the best interest of the child? Yes. Where is the child placed now? In a foster home. And how is the child doing? It's um, <clears throat> he's really well, and it's his birthday today. Uh, he's turn he just turned one, um, and he's uh, up to date with medical, um, and dental, uh, as well as very bonded with foster parents. Are foster parents willing to adopt if that becomes available? Yes. Are they already licensed or working on licensing? Do you know? Yes, sir. Which one? Are they, are they licensed? Yes. No. Um, and it is their intent if he um, adoption becomes available, that's their plan? Yes. Um, I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Michelson, any questions of this witness? Just briefly, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Angriani, in reviewing the permanency reports, just to get an understanding of the timeline, your uh, last face-to-face -face visit with um, Jessica was in March? Yes, sir. And then, um, did uh, this is where I wasn't clear. Did you have any contact with Jessica um, up to July when she contacted you about treatment? Um, she just contacted me 
one time the end of July. And then um, she asked me if um, she can go to treatment herself because she has insurance. And I said, yes. And then she's no more contact after that. Okay. July. But, yeah. So from March to July, you didn't have contact. No. Is that is that true? Yes. Okay. And then um, from uh, July until August fifteen. When was the, when was the last time you had contact after July? August fifteenth, sir. August fifteenth. Okay. Yes. And then from August to October, did you have any contact with her? No. Okay. And I noticed in the report, it indicated that one of your reviews of her residence appeared to be padlocked. Did she change her residence? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I heard from um, Jessica Rip's mother uh, that she moved from that place. Okay. And you were I able did not to know um, the new address. Okay. And you were able to investigate that address? Uh, yes, but I did. I couldn't find it, and grandmother also could not find the address. So we we kind of lost um, in the address. Okay. Yes, sir. So it's not clear where she was living then. No. Okay. Um, and in terms of visitation, was a visitation schedule arranged for her initially? Yes. Okay. So so she had access to the child if she wanted to. Yes, sir. Okay. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Sorry, Ms. Kincaid, any questions? Uh, briefly, Your Honor. Uh, there was an individual that was named as an alleged father in this case at one point. Is that correct? Yes. But that individual was ruled out. Is that correct? Yes. And did he take a paternity test? Yes. Okay. And he came back as not the father. Yes. Uh, after you received that information, did you attempt to reach out to Ms. Rube to find any other names? Yes. Did you receive any response from her? No. Um, did you ask any other family or friends who the potential father could be? Yes, I asked the grandma. Yes. And did she have any idea? No. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Okay. Uh, Ms. Um, Xander is placed in, in the same foster home from the beginning of the case, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and and you're having regular contact with his grandmother, mother's mom. Yes. And he also gets visits with her and and a brother. Yes, that's correct. Um, and so um has has that foster home been cooperative and and helpful in terms of what Xander needs? Yes. All right. Um, and would you would you say he's thriving there? Oh yes, it's very thriving. I pass the witness. Okay, uh, Mr. Trapp, anything further of this witness? Nothing further of this witness, Your Honor. Okay. All right. The department rest. Farm over rest, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Michelson, anything to present today? No, we rest in close. Okay. Ms. Kincaid? No witnesses, Your Honor. Rest in close. All right. And Ms. Zavala? No witnesses, Your Honor. I would rest in close. <clears throat> okay. Ms. Zavala, do you have a recommendation to make? I do, Your Honor. Um, Xander is is really doing well. Um, I do believe it would be in his best interest for uh, the paternal uh, rights to be terminated uh, for for both parents at this time. All right. Thank you. All right. At this time, then I do find by clear and convincing evidence that it is in the best interest of the child, Xander Reed, to terminate the parental rights between the child and his mother, Jessica Reed, based on Texas Family Code 161001, subsection B1, the E, N, O, and R grounds, and the best interest under uh, Texas Family Code 161001B2. 
I also find by clear and convincing evidence that it's in the best interest of Xander Reeb to terminate the alleged unknown father's rights based on his failure to register with the paternity registry under Texas Family Code 161002, subsection B3. I will name the Department of Family and Protective Services as the permanent managing conservator of Xander, uh, and I will dismiss all court-appointed attorneys uh, from the case, except for the Zavala, uh, after the de novo and appeal expires. Uh, Ms. Zavala will remain as the attorney, the child's attorney and guardian ad litem. And counsel, as always, if you're instructed to file an appeal, please uh, do not do that until a final order has been signed and adopted by the referring court. Also, just be mindful that your de novo time frame does begin to run since we've rendered today in open court. All right. I appreciate everybody. Um, thank you all very much. Those of you that have no further business with the court, you're free to go. Thank you. Thank you, Nerdy. Thank you, Judge. Thank you.